I'm Karima Brown. Welcome back to The Fix. Let's get straight to it. Our roundtable discussion and what we'll be talking about tomorrow morning. Joining me is, of course, political commentators Vuganim De as well as Ibrahim Fakir. Gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to the program. Let me get straight to it. Now, of course, we saw the African National Congress's KwaZulu Natal conference come to a screeching halt. Uh, we saw, of course, Gwede Mantash being booed, but we also saw Sihle Zigalala um, apologizing. Let's quickly have a listen to that apology and then talk about how this is going to imp impact the week that's coming ahead. Unless it is not an ANC meeting. If it's a fractional meeting, I'm not going to speak. If it is an ANC meeting, I'm going to speak here tonight. Umay affection, the meeting, and this will take. Umay ANC, this up, That, of course, um, Gwede Mantash, who is, of course, also the president uh, or rather the chairperson of the African National Congress. We know, of course, that uh, Sihle is um, going to uh, be a big player in that uh, province. And uh, let's listen again uh, to him apologizing on behalf of the delegates. From the beginning, we want to sincere apologize to the ANC, national chairperson in particular, but to the officials and the NEC as a whole for what happened uh, yesterday. What happened yesterday where the national chair could not address embarrasses us as the ANC in Guazulu Natal but it's foreign from uh, the tra it's foreign to the tradition of the ANC. That, of course, ANC strongman in KwaZulu Natal, Sisle uh, Zigalala. He doesn't have an official title because no conference took place. Vugani, this was always going to be the case. This was always going to be the possibility. What happens now? Look, in, the first thing to say is that in 2007, um, the then national chairperson of the ANC, Monsieur Lakota, uh, at the Bologna conference was uh, shouted down mm. and uh, and couldn't speak and couldn't preside over the conference which is his duty as national chairperson of the of the organization and yet ANC politicians particularly the ones who are at the very center of these factional struggles mm. keep telling us that this is foreign to the traditions of the ANC which it's is, of not. course, nonsense. It's not. This is the new tradition of the mm -hmm. ANC. In fact, let me bring you in here, Ibrahim. This idea that there's traditions in the ANC uh, that gets invoked uh, when particular factions want to drive home their messages is simply not working, right? No, absolutely not. But it's also just factually incorrect because you can't talk about a tradition in the ANC post-1994 which is continuous with traditions from the ANC pre-1994, mm -hmm. pre-1990. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's an interregnum between 90 and 1994. The ANC had to develop very new traditions because it was in very new terrain. Yes. It was almost in negotiating terrain. And yet okay? its political um, and organizational uh, mannerisms is like in a time warp. Yeah, I mean, there's a lacuna mimics. that, it, that it is mimics that happening what it, there. What, it mimics what it used to do in a liberation era. Uh, in a struggle era, now, which, 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 which brings me to something that a lot of people are engaging with us on social media. Both of you heard, of course, the interview that I just did in our big hitter section with former President Khalima Mutlante. And the big question there was building a capable state, right? And it's tied to this idea of a modern mm. African National Congress. Mm. Tabo Mbeki tried to build a capable state. Mm. Uh, people accused him of neglecting the African National mm. Congress and being a technocrat. Mm. Um, um, Khalima Mutlante said, 34 ministers, not everyone should have a deputy, and mm. DG should actually serve very long. Vugani, is that something that you can live with? Do you think that's a good idea? 
President Mandela's cabinet, I think, was 24 ministers. Mm. Um, and some of the largest uh, economies in the world, I think it's it's limited to about 20, 22. I, I heard him say 34 ministers. I yeah. thought it was very, very generous. Mm. Uh, in mm. fact, uh, President Zuma's cabinet was, was between 34 and 39. Plus the so, deputies. Uh, plus the deputies, giving us a uh, an executive of over 70 Almost uh, 80. people. Yeah. Just quickly. Uh, that is not necessary. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, Ibrahim, let me bring you in here. The size of an executive is obviously an important question, particularly when the state is the largest employer, yeah. uh, which is a hallmark of unequal society such as ours. What is the ideal size of a cabinet? Uh, and more importantly, do you agree with uh, former President Motlante that DGs should actually serve for longer terms? Because sure. remember, they serve for three terms and the so ministers for five. Two parts to this question. First is I'm not sure that we can give a number because your, the size of your cabinet and your executive is determined by the kind of political and social objectives you want to achieve. Mm. Now, ultimately, your test is how productive mm. is a member of the executive. So but if I, you think of certain ministries that yeah. exist today and you think of the value of for money, which is a return on investment that we yeah. put in, it's very low. So those are the ones that need to go away with. With regard to directors general, you know, actually you want career civil servants. Mm. That's what you ideally want. The and in problem, fact, we don't, we don't have them because there is no training. And of course, some people believe that it's only those who are politically aligned to you yeah. that will carry out your, 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 your program. Well, there's a degree to which you do want political compatibility between the administrative head yeah. who ties in with the political vision of his political principle. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a cadre, firstly. Secondly, training is not that important. Mm. What is actually important as is the case in France, perhaps even in India, yeah. is a particular bar to entry into Absolutely. the civil service. Yeah. And in India, the bar to entry in the civil service is in fact quite high. You write a national civil service yeah. uh, exam. Okay, I want to bring it uh, back to the question that we're looking. We're looking, this is called the segment looking ahead. So we're looking at how the developments are actually going to impact. And of course, our starting point was this case that is in conference that came to a screeching halt. Now, on the day that the conference was meant to start and when it was in fact in Interdicted. Uh, the other major dramatic development was, of course, um, former President Zuma's ongoing legal woes, uh, which, of course, again uh, was postponed. Let's take a listen quickly to uh, uh, former President Zuma again addressing his supporters. I want to tie it to this question of where the ANC is going, but also just this, um, the size of this government and whether we're, in fact, building an effective state. Ukona bandi abatu zumu corrupt abagaze bangje no kuti inle ngiyenzile abanye babo ngiyabazi ba corrupt jongoba pesho njalo nje zosonkhulumi izinto zabo now, of course, uh, President Jacob Zuma always threatening that he's going to spill the beans, always saying, I'm going to talk, I'm, the time is going to come. Vugani, he hasn't said a word. What is this about? I mean, we know he's expert at playing victim, but is he the um, genius behind bringing this conference that couldn't get off the ground to a halt? Mm. Is he the one that is, in fact, going to stop Ramaphosa in his tracks in terms of getting the economy going? It's, it's such a bizarre threat, and it, it is also an indicator of how little President uh, Zuma understands and al has always understood his, his role as mm. the uh, president of a, of a democratic republic. I mean, he's essentially saying that I am aware and have been aware of, uh, of corruption committed by others throughout my time in office. And but I, I did sat on about it, it because, <laughs> because uh, I, I, I was sitting on it in, in, in order, uh, in case I needed the information in order to, to fight back. To um, leverage. To, exactly. Um, uh, that, that's a deeply, deeply problematic. But, but obviously, you can't make that argument to, mm. to President Zuma. He just does not uh, think that way. He doesn't I, understand his role. I'm Absolutely. Sure, Come I'm, not sure, I'm not sure whether he even understands that he's actually liable for prosecution. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're a head of state, laws, yes, yeah. and yeah. if you know of a corrupt act, Mm. He is the head of state and he's saying, I know of mm. corrupt acts. So mm. if us as ordinary people know about corrupt acts and we, we don't act on it, we are compelled to, by law to, to, to and yeah. we're complicit. Guys, this uh, segment of the program is so important because, of course, it sets the agenda. Now, mm. we know last week um, one of the Chapter 9 institutions that is meant to put a break on power, the public protector, uh, was a no-show. Um, and there's again the question around, is she fit for office? Should she stay in, the, in her office? She's got a fixed term in office. Uh, she's meant to make an appearance uh, on Wednesday. Vugani, do you think she's going to do another disappearing act? Is she going to do a Dudu Mieni? 
Uh, what an interesting um, um, uh, thing to talk about, Karima, having uh, just had the discussion about the civil service and whether or not it is, it <laughs> yes. is advisable to have civil servants that, that, that serve these uh, uh, longer, mm. uh, uh, slightly more permanent <coughs> uh, uh, terms. Mosesiwe uh, Mkwebane is the, the very example of what is, is potentially wrong with that, yes. with that way of thinking. Um, entrenching people in the civil service uh, runs the danger that you entrench the, the likes of, of Moses Ruben Exactly. She's only been in office for, for less than two years, I think. Yeah. Let me and has, has another We're running seven out of time, to Chaps. I want to give you 30 seconds quickly to reflect on the Shivambu matter. And it, it comes to the question of the civil servants, the nature of the civil servant that we're talking about. Well, that attack on Ishmael Mamoniat. I'm sorry to put this on you. You are of Indian descent. I'm well. not sure whether the <laughs> EF is going to come after me for picking you to choose. But quickly, um, uh, former President Khalima Mutlandi says he doesn't have the guts to say that outside the protected area of parliament. Do you agree? Yeah, he doesn't. And this is the problem both in the in Kobani case and in this case. Parliament, now that it's got more teeth, needs to actually bite. Mm. Because mm. parliament has the power not just to subpoena, but to also to discipline these people. Yeah. Now, Shivambun ought to be disciplined through a parliamentary process because yeah. completely what he's saying is wrong. In fact, what the EFF does is itself undermines African leadership because yes. Dondo Mohajani actually ins issues instructions. Are Absolutely, you saying guys. I have to call a halt. My apologies. This is where we have to leave it. Ibrahim Fakir, Vuganim Day, thank you so very much. Uh, we are, of course, discussing the week up, uh, you know, coming up ahead. But Next on The Fix, the cool stuff, Lost Generation or Generation Next.